This video is going to be a combination field craft task and historic ordnance video. It's going to be identifying U.S. hand grenades. Now, I'm going to be using as the basis for this video a task from the Common Task Manual. The manual that I'm using is STP 21-1-SMCT, Soldier's Manual of Common Task, Skill Level 1, Edition, October of 1985. It's better with, with the identification task in this manual than the later ones because the later manuals change this task to just employ hand grenades. And I believe identification is just as important as employing. Now the particular task is task number 071-325. Four four zero five. Task: Identify and employ hand grenades. Standards: Identify six types of hand grenades and select the correct hand grenade to do each of the following: A. Disable or kill personnel. B. Signal personnel. C. Screen or provide concealment. D. Destroy equipment and start fires. E, control riots or to disable individuals without causing serious injury. Now, when I went through training many, many years ago, we were told that hand grenades could be divided into three areas, defensive, offensive, and chemical. Now, the first grenades I'm going to show you are the defensive grenades. Defensive grenades are ones that cause shrapnel, they are meant to be used from a defensive fighting position, but obviously they can be used offensively also when assaulting a target. Now the first one we're going to start off with is the most common fragmentation grenade in the U.S. inventory currently. Remember, I am going to be using training aid examples. I do not have examples of the real thing to show you, and on some of these I will have to show pictures. But first off, we have the M67 fragmentation grenade. The real one will have a green body with yellow markings on it, and some will have a yellow band. It will say frag grenade fragmentation M67. There will be a lot number on it and a year or month and year of manufacture. There are older versions of this that could appear that are M33s. The difference between it and the M67 is there is no secondary safety pin on an M33. Other than that, the composition will be the same. Now the M67 weighs 14 ounces, so just under a pound. Filler 6.5 ounces of composition B. Delay time, average, 4 to 5 seconds. Kill radius, 5 meters. Wound radius, 15 meters. But fragmentation can spread out to as far as 230 meters from point of detonation. The M67 has two safety pins. The primary and the secondary safety clip. When you employ this hand grenade, if you are right handed, you grasp your hand grenade like this. The safety lever into the meaty part of the palm and fingers gripped around it. If you are left handed, you reverse it so that the safety pin goes to the inside, the grenade faces down. To employ this grenade, you're in position. First thing you do, flick off the secondary safety. Always do that first. If your grenade does not go off after you tossed it, it's probably because you forgot to take this off. Then you pull the pin. And when you do it, you will have to twist as you're pulling because on the other side, and I cannot find a, the real grenade pin I have that shows this, the other side of the pin 
the two legs form kind of a diamond shape so they're, it's not going to fall out of the grenade as easily. So as you're pulling the pin, you got to twist it as you're pulling it to get those two legs to kind of split apart and more easily pull out through the hole. Maintain pressure on the safety lever until you throw it at your target. Now, if you would come across the older M33 fragmentation grenade, what you were supposed to do with those before you went on the mission, you put electrical tape through the pin around here on the fuse body going around. You didn't want it so tight that the safety lever would not come off. You want it just tight enough to keep the pull ring from pulling out. Now, next grenade I'm going to show you is the one replaced by the M33 and later the M67. The, grenade, well, the reason for me showing you this grenade is because of pictures and footage out of Syria during the Syrian Civil War when we were dropping supplies to the quote-unquote moderate Syrian rebels who turned out to be ISIS. So the next grenade that's in the series is the lemon-shaped grenade, also known as the M26. This came out during the Korean War, and it was manufactured, I've seen, up into the 1980s. Some of these had... A secondary safety clip installed most of them didn't just like with the M33 before the mission you had to prep it with tape around the fuse body holding in the pin now the details on the M26 it weighed 16 ounces so one pound the filler was 5.75 ounces of composition B the delay time on the fuse was four to five seconds. Kill radius, five meters. Wound radius, 15 meters. And fragmentation could reach out to as far as 230 meters. These are the lemon grenades. There's no telling what you might find on a battlefield or inside an old ammunition bunker somewhere. So, you might come across this type. The next type shocked me when I seen these are still appearing on the battlefield, and I know these were dropped in large numbers to the moderate Syrian rebels. The grenade that the M26 replaced, we're talking the Mark II pineapple grenade. First entered production in 1920, produced up into the 1960s, supposed to have been removed from the inventory in the 1960s, 1970s, and replaced with the M26. But amazingly, there apparently is still some of these in the U.S. inventory inside bunkers in this country, which is shocking. Weight of the grenade is one pound, five ounces, of which the filler on it was between 1.5 ounces to 2 ounces. There were multiple types of explosive fillers used, with the most common being TNT. For those of you that do not remember from some of the other hand grenade videos in the Historic Ordnance series, TNT has a tendency to, deg to degrade and become unstable and very dangerous, hence why it was replaced by Composition B, a far more stable explosive material. Fuses. Average delay time was four to five seconds. The kill radius is between five to 10 yards. The wound radius was up to 50 yards. With fragmentation potentially reaching farther. The reason this was serrated like this, the theory was, is that when this grenade exploded, the explosion would rupture easier along each of these little ribs 
causing better fragmentation, but they found in combat reports and testing that was not the case. That is why they went with a smooth body grenade after this, and they changed how the grenade was actually assembled to increase the uh, fragmentation by the material that was inside and scoring the material on the inside as a grenade during production. But these are still out there, shockingly, still in U.S. inventory in bunkers here in the United States. Now next up, I'm going to show you smoke grenades. These are used for signaling and also concealment. The first one the M18 series smoke grenade. These weigh 19 ounces. The average delay on this is one to two seconds. It has an igniter, not a fuse like on a fragmentation grenade. There is no blasting cap on this igniter. So it burns after the primer is hit by the striker, burns one to two seconds before it flames down and sets fire to the chemical composition inside here, producing colored smoke. Now these grenades, as you can see, have a dark green body gray or lighter green markings depending on what you look at and yet you can identify what color the grenade is by the markings on the side but more easily the color on top colors that are in the u.s inventory include red yellow green and violet the standard burn time on these is between 50 to 90 seconds you use these for marking. Some of the uh, standards I know for the uh, different colors, yellow was what we used for a visual for signaling that there was a chemical weapon employed in an area. Violet or purple was what engineers used to throw out next to a breach site to show that the breach was open. Red was used for signaling an emergency, in particular casualties at a particular location. Now the next grenade is concealment. I'm going to start with the older one here. Same shape, same size as the M18 series. This is the AN M8 HC white smoke grenade. This is HC high concentration. This is meant for concealment. These burn longer than an M18 series and the smoke cloud is a lot thicker. Now the weight of these is 24 ounces. The body is a light grayish greenish color. Markings are black. Identified white on top. Standard burn time on these was 105 to 150 seconds. So this gives you a good amount of time for crossing a street, making it through an obstacle, whatever was required. Now officially these were retired from inventory about 15 years ago or so replaced with the AN M83HC, which weighs 16 ounces, of which 11 ounces is the filler. The body is a forest green. The markings are light green, has a blue band and a white top. Standard burn time on the new HC smoke grenades is only 25 to 70 seconds, so less than even your standard colored marking smoke. I can't say for certain that that burn time is correct. I did not get that from the Department of Defense, so who knows for certain. 
but the grenade will look similar to this in size and shape. And as you heard, the body will be a darker color. The markings, light green, will have a blue band across here, but it will have a white top. And it will say AN M83 on it. Now the next grenades I'm going to show you will all be pictures because I do not have examples of these. The first one I'm going to show you is a riot control grenade. The ABC N7, A2 and also A3 canister grenades. These are CS which is tear gas. They have gray bodies red markings. They weigh 15.5 ounces, so just under a pound each. Regular delay time before ignition of the chemical inside is one to two seconds. The burn time for the filler is between 15 to 35 seconds on average. Now there is another version of the CS grenade that was in the inventory. They were supposed to have been gone out of the inventory in the 90s, but I have heard that they were being employed in Iraq and Afghanistan in certain situations with people don't want to talk about. But there is a baseball grenade version. See if you can get the picture here. The ABC M25A2. The grenade color and markings, gray body, red markings, and band. These were rubberized, no secondary safety pins, pulled it, threw it, it started burning, and the body itself would actually start to burn up. With these, the gas actually comes out the bottom, like on here, there's a hole covered with a piece of tape. This is where the CS, the tear gas, dispels from. Now you can tell the difference between HC, white concentration smoke, and CS by the color, by looking at the sun through the smoke. If the sun is a pinkish or reddish color, as you look through the smoke, it's tear gas, it's CS. Now the next one I'm going to show you is a chemical grenade. This one will be the same size as the uh, smoke grenades. This is the AN M14 TH3 incendiary grenade. These are 32 ounces, so two pounds each. The filler is Thermate, not Thermite. This Thermate is an improved version of Thermite. Now, the newer ones will have red body, black markings. The older grenades that you could potentially come across had gray body, a purple band on it, purple coloration band going around, and purple markings. These basically no delay time. Just like with the smoke grenades, it has an igniter. Pull the pin, toss it on your target, put it on top of your target, whatever it is. Let the safety fly and look away. If you stare at this while this is going off, you will damage your retinas and you can go blind. Now the next one that I have up is the first of the offensive hand grenades in the US inventory. This is also about the same size as a smoke grenade. This one is the Mark III A2, MK III A2 Concussion Grenade. Weight 15.6 ounces, of which 8 ounces of it is TNT. 
Standard delay on the fuse is four to five seconds. Casualty radius is two meters. Someone could potentially be wounded out to 200 meters. This was meant for tossing inside rooms to seriously disable the enemy personnel inside. Toss this inside a bunker, toss it inside the room. It didn't cause fragmentation that could uh, injure the person assaulting in, but the concussive force was enough to, at a minimum, knock out the enemy personnel inside, if not kill them and turn them into a bag of jelly. It would rupture the internal organs. Body is black in color. Markings are yellow. Now, the next and the most current offensive hand grenade we have is the M84 Flash Bang. Weight 8.33 ounces, and these are very narrow when compared to the other hand grenades. There is two pins on this, the primary, which is circular, and the secondary, which is triangular shaped. Now the standard burn time on this before ignition is one to two seconds. The filler is a combination magnesium aluminum. It is classified as less lethal. The body is green in color and you can see there are holes drilled into it. Now, from my understanding on these, before employment, you must remove the pin attached to the triangular pin first. That's your secondary safety. And then when you employ it, you're about to toss it into the room and through the window, into the vehicle, whatever it may be. That is when you pull the round primary safety pin and toss it inside. Now this next grenade is another chemical grenade which is officially not in the inventory anymore, but they do have a tendency to appear. And they're extremely dangerous, and that's why I'm gonna show it to you. This is the M34 white phosphorus grenade. This was meant for signaling also meant to start fires, just like the incendiary grenade. Weight was 27 ounces. Standard delay was around four seconds. The burst radius on this was supposed to be only 35 meters, but white phosphorus does get tossed beyond that 35 meter mark. Now, Markings on these, the older grenades will be light gray in color, have a yellow band, and black markings. In the 1980s, due to standardization of ordnance in NATO, it was changed to a light green color for the body, red markings, but retaining the yellow band because it can produce casualties. Now, why are these grenades so dangerous? The phosphorus had a tendency to eat away at the time system in the fuse body. A lot of guys were injured in Vietnam with some of the older Willie Peets, as they were called, white phosphorus grenades. They would pull the pin, let the safety fly, and they would get ready to throw it you know, as they're throwing it, the safety would uh, go, striker would come forward, hit the primer, and they would ignite automatically. In investigations by the Ordnance Department, they found that the white phosphorus had interfered with the delay element, caused it to degrade, turning these into instantaneous ignition. These grenades were designed originally in the 1950s to be employed on the grenade adapter for firing off of the end of the uh, M1 Grand with the grenade launchers. 
If these do uh, come around, you do come across them, I would not use the fuse that is on it to ignite it. I would wrap this with debt cord and attach a time system to that and use that time system to ignite this grenade. Never trust the fuse on an M34 white phosphorus grenade. There you go, that's the identification of US grenades. I gave you a bunch here. The most common ones you will see the M67, the M18 smokes, either the AN M8 or the AM M83 high concentration smoke grenades. The others you could potentially come across, so you must know what they look like. For employing the smoke grenades, very simple. Hold it the same way like I showed you for the fragmentation grenade. No secondary safety. Grasp it, pull pin, throw. As it's going through the air, the igniter will go igniting the composition inside. As I showed you with the fragmentation grenade, M67 or any grenade with a secondary safety, first remove the secondary safety and then pull the primary pull ring, twisting as you're pulling it out, keeping pressure on the safety lever, because as soon as you let up off of the safety lever, you're cooking off the grenade, that striker will come forward, hit the primer, and start the time on the ignition system to detonate the blasting cap to set off the filler inside. Now I mentioned in videos that the Viet Cong used to take the fuses from the M18 smoke grenades and put them on our fragmentation grenades. Can this still be done? I cannot say for certain. Uh, I have a suspicion, have not been able to confirm it, that they changed the thread patterns between smoke grenades and the M67 fragmentation grenades. Could it still be done on the older hand grenades? More than likely. What you would do, you would unscrew the fuse from the fragmentation grenade. Unscrew, and I'm not gonna do it from this because it's held on with the screw. Unscrew the igniter from the top of the smoke grenade. You would attach to the bottom of the igniter a non-electric blasting cap. And I would suspect you would pour a little bit of smokeless powder in there from a cartridge case inside the blasting cap before it gets crimped to the bottom of the igniter from the smoke grenade and then you would take that grenade, that fuse, and screw it on here. Now there is differences in the shapes of the, the safety levers, as you can see. So when you would screw this onto a fragmentation grenade, make sure it stays, the main part stays down, but try to bend out right here the bottom part screw it around before you would either put this back down or cut it off depending on how it was used as a booby trap now there is a note in US military manuals for hand grenades that the smoke grenade can be employed without the igniter on this. The igniter is removed, leave the top open, remove the tape from the bottom. What you're supposed to do, hold this 
either one end or the other, it didn't quite clarify, hold the open end to a lit fire, a burning fire, until you see it starting to ignite, and then you would throw it. That is authorized for emergency wartime use only. So that is a potential way that you could take the fuse off of this, use it as a booby trap on a hand grenade, but still be able to employ the body, the smoke grenade body in combat. There you go. That's more thorough than you would ever get in basic training. Now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember SAONs.